This there is, is no substantive motion. Is not a rally. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, understanding Order 874, you cannot impute improper motive either on a member or on the House without a substantive motion with at least four days' notice. And understanding Order 91, a member who then makes such a statement of fact must substantiate. Mr. Speaker, the leader of majority has just imputed that this House extorts from members of the Cabinet. It does not matter that he's referring to some newspaper cutting which has not been tabled and which we do not know, and which he can also therefore not properly refer to. Mr. Speaker, I urge that you urge that the majority leader is out of order to retract those words and that they be extracted from the answer. Because anyone listening might actually think that we are tacit tacitly admitting and approving those falsities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senior Counsel, I, I understood it differently. I thought he was speaking about it in the negative, that we cannot pick a gossip column and use it as evidence against anybody. So as a matter of fact, order... As a matter of fact, the way I understood is that he's saying a gossip column cannot be a statement of fact, yes. and that no member has extorted anybody unless there is evidence. So you are saying the same thing uh, in, as far as I understand. Order, carry on, Majority Leader. Order. Thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker. And, and indeed, Honorable Speaker, you have captured it very well. And the point I was making, Honorable Speaker, for the benefit of the Honorable Tiende Amolo, in fact, I used my own example, and probably that of the Honorable John Wamboka, uh, Honorable Jack Wamboka, that Honorable Speaker, the same way the Honorable ja Jack Wamboka has presented newspaper articles, media reports, is the same way anybody cannot present such gossip columns as this Honorable Speaker. And therefore, that's what I was arguing, Honorable Speaker, that there lacks particulars, there is no precision on the gross violation of the Constitution. Jack Wamboka has completely failed to show us that, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I was on the point of whether this particular motion is a decoy, a decoy to derail the substantive inquiry that is before this House by a committee of this House, Honorable Speaker, and I want, Honorable Speaker, to humbly submit that I find this motion as a decoy, a such decoy, to make sure that we hide those who are ultimately culpable by derailing the Committee for Agriculture from doing its work. And I want to encourage members of the Agriculture Committee to get to the bottom of this fertilizer issue, Honorable Speaker, ensure that the inquiry pinpoints to us those who are ultimately culpable, and that is why, Honorable Speaker, I was saying, if I were the Honorable Jack Wamboka, I would have been very patient to wait for the Agriculture Committee to tell us who or which organization or which particular state officers are culpable, including the Cabinet Secretaries and the PSAs. Should the Agriculture Committee find the Cabinet Secretary, the Principal Secretaries, those at NCP be culpable, then we have a duty and an obligation to the country to hold them to account. Otherwise, Honorable Speaker, as things stand now, the Honorable Jack Wamboka has completely failed, Honorable Speaker. This motion, Honorable Speaker, finally seeks to remove the CS on grounds that there are serious reasons to believe that the Cabinet Secretary has committed a crime under national law. Honorable Speaker, this ground requires the Honorable Jack Wamboka to have attached evidence of conviction or judgment made against the accused person. He has failed to do so. In fact, he has gone to great lengths, Honorable Speaker, to quote cases that, as uh, somebody, I think it's the Honorable Owen Bayer, pointed out, cases that we considered at the point the House vetted the Honorable Mithikal Inturi as Cabinet Secretary and approved. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, as the Honorable uh, Owen Bayer was alluding to, that is a matter that is already spent. The Honorable Jack Wamboka therefore cannot take the House back to relook into those cases. And may I remind him, 
when the Honorable Sears appeared before the committee, he said he had 32 court cases that he was battling with, some civil, and he was dealing with them. And the committee, including the member for Bumula, approved the cabinet secretary to serve as cabinet secretary. How then do you retract your own steps or call the House to retract our own steps, Honorable Speaker? Honorable Speaker, allow me to conclude by just saying, Honorable Speaker, that the mover of this motion, as courageous as he thought he was, he has completely failed the House. He has failed to show us the precision with the law that he ought to show in line with the Constitution and the standing orders. I have spoken to the probate value of the evidence he has adduced that is not there. The grounds, as I said, Honorable Speaker, are particularly not particularized in line with our standing order 64 and 66. And that is why I said he's quoting newspaper articles, which I also said I could quote about chairs of committees and other people who are said to extort people money. And Honorable Speaker, allow me, Honorable Speaker, then, to plead with this House to defeat this motion because it will derail the fight against corruption. If we derail the fight against corruption, Honorable Speaker, by using such motions to speak to the gallery, to speak to our voters, to speak about corruption but never acting over corruption, Honorable Speaker. Remember in the 11th Parliament, Honorable Speaker, Wind up in, a minute. in the State of the Nation address, 200 state officers were declared jobless. But what came out of that political pronouncement, Honorable Speaker? Absolutely nothing. That is what the Honorable Jack Wamboka is calling on this House to do, to make a political declaration in the impeachment of ACS, but get absolutely no value in the fight against corruption. Allow our Committee for Agriculture to expedite its inquiry, find those who are culpable to be charged before courts, allow DCI, ESCC to complete their investigations, and call on us. If you find any public officer culpable, we shall be there to support you, to impeach anybody who will be found culpable, subsequent to credible investigations. But these other political, uh, th these other political things from newspaper cuttings by friend Jack Wamboka falls flat. And I would beg you this early to withdraw this motion to save yourself from the embarrassment, Honorable Jack Wamboka. This is where the Constitution put a very high threshold. Daniel Manduku. Daniel Manduku.